Hello everyone, I am Sanket Bhandari. I am currently pursuing Masters in Data Science from Columbia University in the city of New York. I am also a graduate student assistant at Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. So in today's lecture, we will look into data wrangling in more depth uh, by doing uh, ba a basic hypothesis testing using data wrangling. Now, what is data wrangling? So data wrangling as studied in the earlier lectures, uh, it, also called as data cleaning, it refers to a variety of processes designed to transform raw data into more readily used formats. The exact methods for data wrangling may differ from project to project or the needs of the current project that uh, you are working on. But some of the examples may include merging different data sources into a single data set for analysis, then identifying gaps in data or deleting those gaps, then deleting the data that's either unnecessary or irrelevant to the project, then identifying extreme outliers in the data. Now, first, we will have a look at Jupyter Notebooks. So what are Jupyter Notebooks? So you can use Jupyter Notebooks to run your Python scripts. And it is it has been a popular uh, tool for like running your Python Notebooks since past few years. Now, if you are a beginner and you don't know anything about uh, maybe Python or Jupyter Notebooks, then the easy way to get your hands on Jupyter Notebook is to install the Anaconda distribution of Python. But if you are an advanced user that, who already has Python installed on the system, then I'd suggest you can use pip install Jupyter command in order to install Jupyter Notebooks. Once done, this is the interface of the Jupyter Notebook as shared on the screen. Here you can see that there are different options like file, edit, view, and then insert, which are pretty self-explanatory. This is already a preloaded notebook of data wrangling, but if not, you will get a single cell. These are called cells, wherein in each cell, you can either write a code or uh, it is represented right here that this is a code in Python, or you can have a markdown. So this is the markdown, like for giving headings, we use this. So this is written in markdown and you can select that. Okay, I want this to be a markdown. Then to run this cell, you can either click here and run this cell or there is also a keyboard shortcut to run a particular cell in Jupyter Notebook and it is shift enter or shift return based on the system that you are using for windows it's shift enter for mac it's shift return so if i go here in this line of code and uh, to get into a particular cell you'll have to double click like this is a single click this is double click i'm here now uh, if i do shift enter then you can see that the code has run then uh, you can save the particular notebook and uh, you can run each and every cell separately or if you get your hands on this kind of notebook which already has all the code then in order to see the outcome directly you can or to execute all the cells one by one you can go on this option which states that like this option will this button will restart the kernel then rerun the whole notebook so this is pretty handy. Now, as you know the basics of Jupyter Notebook, and I'd suggest if you have some doubts, then please look on like YouTube or anything. There are a lot of open source resources available for solving your doubts about Jupyter Notebook. So diving directly into the main crux of this lecture, that is data wrangling. So in this lecture notebook, we will test the hypothesis that CEOs or chief executive officers of major companies, be it Apple, Google, any major company, are typically in their 40s or older. That is, they were born after 1980 or before. So we'll have to test like what is the reality. To do this, as some of you might have guessed, we will first identify top companies. Then we will find their CEOs and after that we will extract their ages 
and then we will look at the distribution of ages so the first thing uh, or good practice is to install all of the libraries that are needed so here we will start by installing some libraries that are useful for processing the web data as in this data wrangling process we will be getting our data from real websites now for crawling web pages we will use the scrappy library and uh, this is the command in jupyter notebook to install any library that we want so it's exclamation mark then pip install and the name of the library so here uh, for web scrapping wherein we get data from the websites to our system uh, which is in technical terms called as web scrapping for that we are using scrappy library then the second library is swifter is optional it is used for parallel execution of a program so if there are three to four tasks which let's say take five seconds each so if we are running them in, uh, in series then it will take uh, 15 to 20 seconds but if the programs are independent and if we can run them parallelly then it will save a lot of time and the whole program will run in five seconds as uh, they are parallelly executing at the same time or simultaneously so for this purpose but this library is optional but for this purpose we can use a swift library which we are installing here then for string similarity we are using pip install pi strings i am join then to parse the xml tree we will be using lxml then if you have anaconda distribution then the following libraries are already present but still to be foolproof, we have included them here. That is pp install matplotlib for graph plotting, then pandas for doing all the numerical operations or creating data frames, then numpy for the basic numerical operations. After this, once you are done with installing the libraries, then we will import them. We'll have to import each and every library, even if it's inbuilt or even if we have installed it for our particular use case. Here are some of the imports that we'll use throughout the notebook uh, and they are collected here for simplicity so that you will know all the dependencies. So first is uh, for passing dates and being able to compare different dates to find the ages. So we have imported date time library. Then uh, for fetching remote data, we will be using the URL of websites and to handle that, uh, we will be importing a URL lib library, then uh, we'll import pandas as pd, numpy as np, and SQLite uh, 3 for uh, handling the databases or the tables. So in this particular lecture or this notebook, we are doing it simultaneously in like pandas as well and in more reality or in real world applications we will be doing all us uh, like all these operations on, on some database so for that we will be using sqlite 3 and we have shown it in here so if you have any further doubts in any of the libraries that i have mentioned earlier you can simply go on and like so a simple google search will give you a lot of information so in this case i have served sqlite 3 and then I went on to the SQLite 3 Python. Then I went on to the first link that is uh, that was for python.org. So as you can see here, it explains what SQLite 3 is, which is a C library that provides a lightweight disk based database that doesn't require a separate server process and allows accessing the database using a non-standard variant of SQL query language. Now, even if you don't understand a lot of things mentioned here, a uh, smart way is to go directly to tutorials wherein they uh, will show you some basic code and what does that code do. So here they have imported SQLite 3, which we are doing there. Then here they are creating a connection. And as mentioned here, uh, this will allow to uh, this connection to allow SQLite 2 to work with it and uh, we will use sqlite3.connect to create a connection to the database tutorial.db in the current working directly and uh, if there is no tutorial.db then it will implicitly create one now you will need this information further in our notebook 
after sqlite 3 moving on as we already installed scrappy we are importing scrappy and from scrappy.crawler we are uh, importing crawler process then uh, import swifter then we have imported pystrings i am join as ssj and pystring matching as sm then for data visualization we have imported matplotlib and for you uh like xml tree we are importing from x lxml we are importing a tree now after importing all the necessary libraries we are actually starting with uh, the coding part so first the first step is acquiring data about companies and their ceos so we'll start by loading a remote csv file containing information about companies into a data frame that is company underscore data uh, underscore df where df stands for data frame and then persis is to an sqlite database so this data frame we will convert it to or like convert it to a sqlite table to show you how to work with a real database and we'll also read an html file to obtain information about the ceos of all these companies and we will put that in another data frame which will be company CEO's DF. So there are two data frames to be clear. One is company data and one is company CEO's. Now first look at this line of code here, which is data. And now this is the syntax like URL lib dot request dot URL open. And here we are passing the URL. Now important observation is that this URL also ends with dot CSV. So you might have guessed that okay we are getting a csv file which can easily be read using pandas this is pd for pandas as we have imported pandas as pd so company data df is equal to pd dot read csv and this data which we got from here which is stored from this url now to persist this to an sqlite database and to read it back first as we already saw here we will need to create a connection which we are doing here co double n that is connection equal to like we are uh, like storing this connection in co double n that is con maybe a short form so sqlite 3 dot connect and local db we are creating a database that is local dot db then company data which we already created in here the data frame we will convert that to sql and the name of the table will be companies then we are also passing an attribute of this connection now uh important thing to mention here if you don't know what are the attributes or what attributes should you pass then you can see the documentation right here for this you will need to click uh, like uh, if you know the function that is uh you will have a data uh, data frame here that is company data df dot to sql which is a function and then in these brackets you can simply uh, like uh, put your mouse point over there and click there and then uh, click on shift plus tab which will open this uh, which shows the signature of the particular function now if you click on this plus sign it will maximize it a bit a, it a bit and then you can see what are the attributes the first is name which should be a string so we have given the string name company then schema is by default set to none then we are required to like pass the connection which we have done then if exist then fail so if exist uh, like okay and also to see what does this all represent they have given the description of all the parameters like a uh, name is name of sql table then connection is the connection uh, that we have created then schema then if exists like if the uh, table already exists then what to do it can either fail replace or append here we are choosing to replace like if there is a table then just replace it and create a new one named companies then index equal to false and uh, in this way we have done this part then pd now here we this is an sql script and we are running it in python using uh, pd dot read sql query select star from companies we have created a company stable and to get uh, all the 
put information in that table we will use the syntax select star representing everything from company's table and we are passing the connection as the attribute now let's read an html table containing information about ceos so we have company data and as promised we are moving on to getting the ceos information so company ceos df is equal to pd dot read html and we have this link link and we are like specifically mentioning the zeroth column of that particular link and uh, after reading it we will get this table which will be uh, this data frame which is stored in company ceos DM. now that we have a company data frame and a ceos data frame but the actual problem that we are trying to solve is to get the date of birth of each and every ceo so as mentioned here the problem gets a bit harder like we will have to uh, extract structured data so we need to find date of birth of ceos and to do this we will do crawling and scraping the data from wikipedia now now listen to this part carefully as it is a bit tricky you may need to go over and over again in the notebook but first we'll create a list of ceo web pages to be crawled like first we will create a based on the name of the ceo from the ceo's uh, data frame we will take each and every name then create a list of the link of wikipedia page of that CEO. We'll do this for each and every CEO. Uh, we'll name it as a, cr a crawl list, and then we will run a basic loop which will go through this list, which contains the CEO's web page. And on that web page or the Wikipedia page, we'll try to crawl or scrap the date of birth of that CEO. So let's look at the code so first we are creating a crawl list which is an empty list then for executive in company ceo's data frame and the executive column so this column to be precise which started like julia speed then kumar birla and etc so for executive in the companies for executive in the company ceo's df of executive we will do the following thing that is in crawl list dot append this whole thing plus now this is a, a link that we have created and as you can see at the end after like slash wiki slash we are doing a plus so it will get appended to this link and it will be executive dot replace so we'll replace the dot replace will replace space with underscore so julia space sweet will be uh, ju sorry julie space sweet will become julie underscore sweet uh, and plus we are appending a dot html to it to create the whole web address now as you can see we have like uh, access the crawl list here and this is the list so as you can see this is https and all these things and at last you can see julie sweet dot html so now we have this url for each of the ceo like for kumar birla then shantanu narayan so uh this is the list which is created now we will crawl each web page in this crawl list to obtain the html content of that html page and uh, store in a list called pages so here we will use url lib to crawl all pages in the crawl list and uh, store the responses of the particular page in the list pages so we are creating a pages which is an empty list for url in crawl list in page so for this line is used to extract the person name at the end of the url like his name and then uh, we have printed this statement to basically see where our code is like uh, running for which CEO. So this will print this lines like looking at the file of dash dash dash. And uh, 
then coming on to this part this part will split the url into different parts and convert the person name into ascii code and uh, then we will save page and url for later use so you can take a look at this code and if you don't understand feel free to search on the internet and you will get to know how the uh, url lib library works and we are also like either appending or if the we are using try and accept so if we try to append the response and if we are unable to do that we will print the reason or the error you can see it right here so after that you can see this is what the pages looks like then we will populate a table with the name web page url and birth date of each ceo so uh, this will be executive data frame that is exec df which will finally should look like this where it will have name then page and uh, the date of birth of that ceo so here we'll use e3.html and in brackets we'll pass on the html link on the html content of each page to get a dom tree which if you don't know i suggest to search what is a dom tree that is document object model tree that can be processed via xpath to extract the birth date information then we'll store the ceo name web page and the birth date in exec df we first check that the html content has a table of type vcart and then extract the birth date information if there is no birth date the date time value is none or nat based on uh, your machine so you can either get nat or also none so this is the code for the same where we are first creating a data frame that is exact df is equal to pd dot data frame wherein the columns will be name page and born for page in pages like this pages which we have created earlier the tree will create a dom tree of the particular page using this code then uh, we will get url using page.url then bd will be tree.xpath and we will go to this particular we will find the vcar and if there is one then uh, if its length of the bd is greater than 0 then we will like append that and if it's not then we will ignore it and finally based on this code we will get exec df which will look like this